Hi friends, in this video we are going to talk about how to set up an SFTP server in Windows for multiple users and also set up an SFTP server with read only access so that the user can only read the files but cannot modify the files. You know I have already created posts on setting up an SFTP server and setting up logging for SFTP server in Windows. So this is the blog post and in this blog post I have already covered all of the topics on how to set up an SFTP server in Windows. You can see I have already made a video on that and you can refer that video to understand how to set up SFTP server in Windows. After I released that video, I got a feedback on users facing difficulty for implementing SFTP server for multiple Windows users in the same server. So let's try to set up SFTP server for multiple users of the same server. So how can we do that? It's really simple. You just have to modify the sshd underscore config file which is located in the C program data SSH folder and you just have to add access to multiple Windows users that's all. So let's try to do that now. So let's set up SFTP server for multiple users of the Windows system. So in this system where I'm giving you the demo, I've already set up my OpenSSH SFTP server. So let's try to verify that. So I'm going to go to the services and in these services, I'm searching for OpenSSH server and OpenSSH authentication agent and they're already running. That means the SSH server in my computer is running. And the first step is to create the user account if not present because I am demoing for multiple users. So I need to have another user other than this user where I am setting up the SFTP server, right? So let's try to create a user in this Windows machine. And for that, just search users in the start menu and you should find add, edit or remove other users in the Windows. So let's try to click on that. And here you can see add someone else to this PC. So I have created another user already. So it's called James, but you can even add another user. So let's try to do that. So if you don't want the new user to be associated with Microsoft, just click, I don't have this person sign in information and then add a user without a Microsoft account. And then it will ask the username and password. So just enter this and you can create a new user in this Windows system. And I've already created a new user named James. So that's how simple it is to create a new user account in Windows. And the next step is modify the sshd underscore config file to provide access to the user. So add another section in the ssd underscore config to provide access to that user which you have created just now. So let's try to do that now. So I am in the C program data ssh folder and already there is a file called sshd underscore config and I am going to edit this config file to add access to the new user to the sftp server. You know this file cannot be accessed by normal users it can be accessed only through system administrators. So you have to open this file in notepad opened as an administrator or in the visual studio code opened as an administrator. So to see better syntax highlighting, I will open my Visual Studio code as an administrator. So I'll just run Visual Studio code as administrator. And now let's open the file. See program data SSH and you're opening sshd underscore config. And this is the sshd underscore config file of my existing open SSH server. And here you can see for the existing user already I made a section. So now you can create a new section for the new user which you have created. So let's copy this section and paste it here. And the new user name was James. So let's write James. And here I'm telling password authentication no and public key authentication yes. So for the time being, let's enable both of the password and public key authentication just for testing. And the rest is okay. And here in the change root directory, it is telling the root directory should be pictures slash screenshot of the user's folder. So let's see if there is a folder for this user called James. So now I'm in the folder of James, C users James, and there is a folder called pictures. And in that pictures folder, there is no folder called screenshots. So obviously this will throw an error. So let me remove this screenshots. Let me save this. That means the root directory when James logs in is pictures folder. So James should see these two folders when he logs into the SFTP server. And then X11 forwarding, no, allow TCP forwarding, no, permit TTY, no. These are all the security measures for secure SFTP access. And force command internal SFTP is basically to enable only SFTP access to the user when he logs in through SFTP. And I'm telling password authentication yes for the time being because I want to test this user because I did not actually add public private keys to the user. We will do that in a while. And for now, we can keep public authentication no because I am trying to log in through password authentication. You can even keep it yes. That way you can access the SFTP server using both techniques, password based and public key based authentication. So that's it. I have set up the sshd underscore config file and let's try to restart the SFTP server now. So go to services.msc and then search for OpenSSH and just restart the OpenSSH server. 
all right now the sftp server is restarted so the configuration should be effective now now let's try to use WinSCP to log into the sftp server using this new user called james so let's try to create a new session and the host name is localhost because the sftp server is running in my local computer and the username is james because we created a user called james and added a section for him in the sshd underscore config and let's write the password of that user because I've already enabled the password based authentication in the SSHD underscore config file. And let's try to log in now. And you can see the pictures folder is being shown for the SSH user login because I've kept the root folder as pictures folder. And you can see the camera roll and save pictures folders in the SFTP server. So we have successfully set up SFTP for the new user which you have created in Windows. This way you can create multiple user accounts in Windows and give multiple SFTP logins and it's that simple all right so far so good using password based authentication but how can i enable public key based authentication so let's try to keep the password based authentication as no and let's try to enable public key authentication only so how can i log into this sftp server you need to go to the folder c users james and here you have to create a folder if it's not present and the folder name should be dot ssh and in the dot ssh folder there should be a new file called authorized underscore keys and if you open this authorized key, your public key should be pasted in this. So let's try to do that now. Obviously, this authorized key should have administrative access only. So you have to open this using Notepad or VS Code open in administrator mode. You already opened VS Code in administrator mode. So let's try to open that file now. File, open file. And in C users James, go to the .ssh folder and open this authorized underscore keys. And here I already have the public key pasted. So if there are multiple public keys, add each public key to each new line in this authorized underscore keys file so that's it this is how you can enable public key authentication for a new user for the sftp server you have to first create a folder called c users username dot ssh and in that folder there should be a file called authorized underscore keys remember there should be no extension and in that authorized underscore keys file the public key should be pasted as a new line so basically that is it this is how you can enable public key authentication to the new user but there is a very important catch here this authorized underscore keys should be given access control list such that only system administrators and the system user can access it if other users can access this file sftp server will throw errors and you can see that even in the logs actually so how can you ensure the access control list of the authorized keys file is configured such that only administrators and system users can have access to the file it's very simple you just run this command and this makes sure that the access control is given only to administrator and the system users so i'm just copying this command i will open a command prompt as an administrator run as administrator and then i will change the directory to this folder first cd c users james dot ssh and now i'm in this folder cls clear screen and now let's paste the command here copy the command and paste it here and here the username should be the folder which you are accessing here in my case it's james and in your case it can be another user so make sure that the folder path is correct here see users james dot ssh authorized keys and this is command make sure that the access control is right and now just click enter and you can see successfully processed one files fail processing zero files that means authorization access control list is given successfully and let's try to verify that now I'm just going to close this command prompt. Let's try to right click this authorized keys and in the properties section, go to the security tab and let's try to go to the administrative privileges and see who is given access to this file. You can see only system and administrators group is given access to this file. That means if I try to open with my user also, I can't be able to open this file. So let's try to open this with notepad. And even notepad is telling that you do not have permission to open this file because this file has only access to administrators and the system user. And if you don't configure this access control list correctly, SFTP server will not accept the public key of the user when he tries to log in using SFTP. So this is the place where people get confused or fail to add access to new users. So just make sure that you give the access control list correctly. Just run a single command. That's all. So that is it. Now I have my authorized keys file and I have my public key in place in the authorized keys file. So now the user James should be able to access the server using public key. So let's try to go to WinSCP, close the existing session and I forgot to restart the OpenSSH server. So let's try to restart it again. 
because I have changed the configuration in the SSH T underscore config file, right? So now I have restarted OpenSSH server and the configuration should be effective now. And in the WinSCP, I am going to new session, hostname localhost, and the username is James because it's a new user. And now instead of going to password, I am going to advanced. And here in the authentication tab, I am going to select the private key. I already have my private key. So this is the private key I already have. If you don't know how to use private key, if you want to know how to generate private key, I already created a video on that. Please check out that video on how to generate private key using OpenSSH. So I'm just double clicking this private key. It will create a new PPK file for WinSCP. It's a WinSCP thing. Don't worry about that. Just click OK. And it's going to save the new PPK file. Rewrite it. OK. And now let's click OK. So now I've selected my private key and I'm trying to log in it with the private key and it's successfully logged in without the password using the private key. So now we have successfully logged in with the another user using private key. So that's it guys. It is that simple to set up access to SFTP server to new Windows user. And let's jump to the next topic which is read-only access of the SFTP server to the user. So how can we achieve read-only access to the files? So instead of keeping the root directory as a directory inside the user's folder, let's try to keep it in a folder where the user doesn't have access. Let us take this folder C users documents reports. Actually, James doesn't have access to this folder right now. So if you right click on the reports folder and you click the sharing tab, you can see there is a share button and here you can see there is no access to the folder to James. So let's try to select James and add access to him and instead of giving read and write access, just you read access to the James and click share and done and click close. Now this report folder is only read accessible to James. So let's try to copy this path and instead of changing the root directory to the folder which is accessible to James, let's try to give an external folder which I have just configured and in the double quotes just write the new folder path and James has only read only access to this folder path because we have set it just now. So let's try to save this now and let's try to restart our OpenSSH server again and let's try to connect to the SFTP server now using WinSCP and username is James and try to connect using public key authentication. Select the PPK file which I have just created now and click OK and click login. You can see the folder which I have configured the reports folder is actually accessible now. Let's try to rename this file and try to rename this file now. Click enter. You can see I don't have access to modify the file. Let's try to create a new file and click something like this .txt and click OK. Write something and click save. You don't have access to the folder because you have only read only access. So now this opens up a very nice possibility where users can only access SFTP server and they can't tamper with the files. So this is how you can set up read only access to the SFTP server to a Windows user. You can see I've created a blog post on setting up the SFTP server in Windows with multiple users and read only access. So be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. I have also given you references to the official documentation so that you can do further reading. Please give your valuable feedback or ask any questions in the comment section. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.